If you are an international medical graduate interested to transition to the US, you probably already know 17 states have passed legislation to ease licensing for eligible IMGs assuming they obtain a job offer. In this video, I'm going to summarize all the new requirements under the state licensing pathways and I will also differentiate the concepts of what is meant by a licensure and board certification. Let's do this together. Hi there, I'm Dr. Raji Vayar, a double board certified doctor working in the USA for last many years. I come with the experience of guiding hundreds of doctors like you. This is a report by the American Board of Medical Specialties and these are the minimum requirements you need to obtain licensure. Number one is you must have a job offer. A job offer is always the starting point. So this should be in a hospital in that particular state with experience in physician education and training. Well of course there are some exceptions because some states also let people work in rural areas. Now the second important thing is should you complete your USM exams. If you are transitioning through the state licensing pathways, the requirement is yes. You must complete your USMLE step 1, step 2 CK and OET and BECFMG certified. Eventually, many states may also require you to obtain a USMLE step 3 to obtain to get a full licensure. Currently, the only state that has an exception to this is the state of North Carolina. What happens if you have not done any USMLE step exams? Well, in this case, if you think you are an eligible IMG, you can directly transition to the US through the eminent outstanding path and this is where we have extensive expertise in and we can always guide you through these pathways if you're interested by appointments booked at www.imgsecrets.com. Now here is the third requirement. They require you to have a substantially similar postgraduate training or residency based on national standards provided by the US based GME. Now this is a soft definition because it's extremely hard to compare the type of structure of training provided in the US to, to other countries but basically they want to see that you're someone who has completed your postgraduate training or residency. Well, currently, as I see, there are eight states that have an exception to the requirement of postgraduate residency. Do these eight states move towards asking that you must complete PG training? Not clear yet, but let's wait and watch what happens there. The fourth thing is you must have an unrestricted medical license in another country with at least three years of full-time practice in the same specialty. The physician plans to or the surgeon plans to practice in the US. So essentially, this American Board of Medical Specialties tells you, well, they probably are thinking in terms of board certification, hence they are emphasizing the requirement for completion of residency. So those eight states that do not need residency may not qualify under this unless they change their rules. The fifth thing is a big one. We generally recommend not having any clinical gaps at all or just have it to the minimum. But in this case, they're okay with a clinical gap of two years. In my experience, that's a very significant significant amount of clinical gap and I find it hard to understand what hospital would hire a doctor after two years of clinical experience. There might be some, if you know of any, do post in the comments below. But this is where people would encounter challenges if you have clinical gaps. Of course, the biggest barrier is always going to be how to obtain a job offer because obtaining a job offer in these cases is not going to be straightforward. These jobs are not advertised. You need to have a good understanding of the US healthcare system and obtaining these jobs continue to be challenging and the last requirement they have is that you need to have a two year of provisional licensure period and or supervision of a board certified physician in the same specialty. Now these are all the requirements that you need in order to transition through the state based licensing pathways. In addition to all this the American Board of Medical Specialties does have some specification. Well keep watching the video because I still need to tell you the difference between board certification and licensure and you will be surprised to hear that. Now, here Here's the thing, the medical licensure is a legal requirement for you to practice your specialty in the US. Of course, that's true for most professions, you need to be licensed before you practice that particular profession. So this means you as a doctor has met the minimum standard to diagnose and treat patients because for us as doctors, that's the most important thing. We take care of patients. We need to be very experienced and knowledgeable to safely take care of our patients. Of course, we know that the license requirements does vary from state to state, but generally requires some amount of experience and completion of a few things that I mentioned earlier for you to obtain a licensure. But what is board certification? The board certification is a voluntary process. Remember this, this is what the document says. It's a voluntary process that builds on licensure and requires additional specialty training, rigorous examination, adherence to high professional standards and ongoing education. Now, what is the significance of board certification? Because certification is highly valued for employment by certain employers and pay 
payment decisions, reflecting a higher standard of competency and quality. Now, they say that a board certification is not always required. However, it might be required with some employers and some insurance makers. So when we guide IMGs coming through the US, they as directly as attending physicians, they're not coming with board certification. We have not come across anyone having any issues with insurances, okay? So currently, according to the data by Federation of State Medical Boards, approximately 150,000 doctors in the US are not board certified. I don't mean to say you must not be board certified, but my idea here is to educate you about the various aspects and various streams that exist in the USA. I highly encourage, in fact, I strongly recommend everyone to be board certified. And when we got IMGs, we actually include how to be board certified as one of our important part of discussion during the guiding process as well. Now, the other thing, the American Board of Medical Specialties is what it is if physicians are not board certified, are they going to be treated differently? Well, in our experience, this has not happened. When I transitioned to the US myself without any board certification initially, then I was treated at par with all of my colleagues who were board certified and eventually I became board certified through the alternate entry path. So bottom line is, if you are an eligible candidate, then you can explore all these options to transition into the USA. But in my opinion, what is required is a solid medical training plus residency. So you build upon your expertise. Eventually, you are able to safely take care of patients. To me, that's like the biggest thing. And I am highly in favor of people completing and I cannot imagine people treating patients without residency. So I am in the opinion that people must complete their residency programs. Doesn't matter where from, but they must have completed and they must be certified and proficient enough to safely take care of patients. And uh, you can book appointments on our website at www.imgsecrets.com. We will be more than happy to sit with you and then exactly tell you how to approach your situation, okay? All right, now here is a video where I mentioned all the state licensing options through which you can be a part of the US healthcare system. So yeah, I encourage you to watch this video out. Any questions do post in the comments below. We try to get back to you as soon as we can. Take care, stay safe. I'll talk to you soon. Hence, they are emphasizing the requirement for We need to be very experienced and knowledgeable in order to save But we have not come across anyone having any issues in terms of, in terms of any